Hey guys, welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. This is the podcast show. I'm your host, Khalid Mohidin. Fanatics call in today with Matthew Bretsky. An opportunity for you guys to have a chat with him. Ask him as many terrible questions that you want to. No, I'm just kidding. But just ask him some decent questions that he can answer you. He likes a little bit of banter, so um, we know that about him. Um, but yeah, we're going to obviously just... Me and Matt going to have a chat just about life, just about cricket, just about the random sh- stuff. Like you can sit in on one of our conversations to hear how it's going. Then we got a couple of guys that have uh, put their name in their hat to be able to come join the show. And we have them. We're going to bring them on one by one. Obviously, we can't have a whole chaos going. So we'll bring them on one by one so they can ask us some questions. Um, but other than that, how are you doing, Matt? <laughs> yeah, all good. Eh? Can't complain um thanks for having me on the show yeah that's gonna be awesome so how's training how's it doing getting back in training again and you feeling good yeah it's been like a it's been so good to be back with the boys and just being out there it feels like we're doing something with our lives now so it's it's been like (laughs) um we've been training really hard so yeah no i'm stoked to be back and feeling really good so yeah So awesome. So the guys that have tuned in now at the moment, um, you can join the stream if you want to. You can email us. There are just maybe one or two. If we have time, we'll try to bring you on. I'm just giving everybody an opportunity. Um, so you can just send us, obviously, a um, email. And we will send you the link so that you can join the stream and ask me and Matt some questions. I'm going to put it on the bottom of the screen over here so you guys know that if you want to have a chat with us, so call in, you can join the show. So the cricket. It's good to see some cricket back. First of all, um, let's start because we haven't caught up in a long time. What did you think of that 3TC when you, that was basically the first opportunity that we had to see cricket? Um, mm. What did you think about that from your perspective? <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, uh, I would be lying if I thought I, 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 didn't, I wasn't a fan of it, to be honest. I just think mm. there's not much competition between bat and ball. It's a bit of like, yeah, it and giggle. There's no, I mean, you, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I, I wasn't a fan of it. Um, although it was nice to see some cricket on mm. TV again. And, and for the guys that got out, I'm sure it was really nice. But yeah, I don't think it's a format that going forward is going to be, mm. you know, I, I wasn't a fan, to be honest. Let me just say that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. What, what did you think of it? I mean... <laughs> yeah, me neither. So it's, it's just one of those weird situations, man. Because I'm I'm sitting here and I'm like, yeah, I really want cricket back, right? And then I'm like, whew, there's some decent players in this tournament. And then I'm like, yeah, you know, I really want to... Maybe it's this, I just want to see this happen again and just see guys in action. But then again, it's not really cricket. So I was yeah. like torn between the two. I did a whole watch along with it uh, for yeah. uh, with with a friend of mine, Dan, and we did a whole watch along with it. And I think people tuned in because they thought we were streaming the game. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we had like we had like we had like over one thousand four hundred people on the, on the show Jeez, and, yeah. and that came to watch it. So I was like, what what's going on here? Why can we have so many people? <laughs> but I mean, uh, no, it's because it was a decent watch along show. That's why. So Kiki Fanatics may actually do more. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, I'm just looking at yeah, the, yeah. The <laughs> to see the IPL. I don't know if you checking it out, but it's now super over, and I think about it. I just got to. I'm watching gotta, it yeah, now, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna talk about that a little later yeah, it's been with a hell one of, of a our. Game. Yeah, crazy. It's it's very exciting. What do you, the IPL in general? What do you do? You enjoy that tournament? Do you enjoy watching it? I love it. Eh? Um, I think it can. Mm. They can be like. There's so many games, so it can be a bit repetitive and like you can lose interest a bit. But I know like towards the back mm. end, it gets really exciting. Um, but I, I mean, like every white ball game this summer with the Aussies and the England, there's, it's gone down to the line, like every game. So it's actually, yeah. it's been good. It's been good viewing. It's a pity there hasn't been crowds because I think it would have been buzzing. The stadiums would have been buzzing. But yeah, it's been good cricket, so. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Um, and uh, we got our first question in the comment section over here. We've got one from Mikey. He wants to know, Matt, what school did you attend? Gray High School. Mm-hmm. You know, tell me about oh, Gray. Um, always like there's so many rivals between. Mm-hmm. That's obviously one of the top schools. Um, what was the fiercest rivals for you when you guys were at school? Um, rugby, the first 
school that comes to mind is Gray College in Bloemfontein. Um, they were when we played rugby, they were, were huge for us. Um, and then cricket was St Andrews in Grahamstown. I think yeah. they because they're in the Eastern Cape and they a school that supposedly walk with their nose up like that you know they're very rich school so we always wanted to beat them um they were just but such lack of oaks now that i've met them after school but in school it's yeah. like it's a big ego thing and whatever but yeah i think those two schools probably big big rivals yeah yeah so for the guys out there, we kind of have a watch along and a Q and A at the same time here yeah, because I'm no Matt's chicken at the cricket. I'm chicken at the cricket at the same time. DC <laughs> three runs of six balls over here, so hectic. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they're gonna yeah, be so, right. Yeah, I mean, like I think a lot of people actually are fans. I don't know who you supporting in this IPL. Um, you have, uh, I'm, but I'm a bit all like a lot. Mumbai Indians, but this Delhi Capital side, their their side looks the best on paper for me. I think. Mm. Um, yeah, I didn't even I, realize I was, how good their batting lineup is. I never realized well, that until I actually went to the squads. <laughs> yeah, no, it's next level. But I, I, I don't know. I just want to see good cricket. To be honest, I, I'm not one for supporting one team. And, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I think tomorrow's game, uh, RCB versus Sunrise, is going to be a good game. That's going to yeah, be a, that's awesome serious game yeah yeah so let's bring on our first caller um we've got migos here um if you're ready just just put on your camera and you can join the stream and then i'll once i see that you've you put on your camera you can join the stream and ask matthew some questions if you'd like um it's a unique opportunity for fans i mean i don't think they get this op option a lot of times talking about the ipl teams um it's, it's weird because i always wanted to, i always followed players when I when I watched it, so like initially it was all about I was Herschel Gibbs mad, mm. and then initially I joined Herschel, I uh, followed Herschel, and then obviously teams names changed and corruption happened and after match fixing and yeah. the teams got banned etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So I kind of fell on th RCB because of AB, and yeah. then um, through the years obviously then Virat, and then um, obviously Virat was also there, um, but. Yeah, it was it was pretty awesome from my perspective to follow that. So I think I'm just gonna go with RCB, um, just because I yeah. by default I don't think it's right for me to change um, teams now. Okay, so Migos can't yeah. get his, his camera to work, but it's cool. It is a fan calling, so you can just pop up on the screen. It's alright. That's fine with me. Um, welcome to the show, bud. Um, is there any questions you have for Matt? Mary, <laughs> how's it? Hey, hey, oh, I know this <laughs> voice. <laughs> Sorry, I, I can't, know exactly. I can't to get my my camera to work here. Yeah. But um, yeah. I was just I just want to know what's your what's your favorite exercise in the gym? Because you know I um, I've seen you working with big arms, so I just want something. <laughs> Before you answer, just tell the fans who this is. <laughs> <laughs> No pressure, man. It's pity. <laughs> it's Marku Janssen. Yay. <laughs> my my yeah, favorite you, you, you. gym exercise. Um, I don't know, bro. Uh, I like my running. So I'll stick with my running, I reckon. Because I, I saw you in the gym doing a lot of... of of pull-ups and push-ups. So I was just wondering. Yeah, I like that too. I like a lot of body weight stuff. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. Show your camera, man. Show your camera. Yeah, because show your I'm camera. Trying. You need... I'm trying. <laughs> I'm you trying. Must... I'm trying. Okay, so be okay before, you, before you enter the stream, right? So exit. Did it disappear now? There you go. Trying to tutor him on how to put his camera on on air. Wow. Um, so, Are you gone? what happened now? Yeah, it's one of those games. One of those games. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe easier now. Now we're lo losing yeah. Matty. Yes. 
There we go. Finally. Finally. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> One of those quote Sorry. in actions type of things. I think we lost Matthew now, but he's, he's, he's lagging yeah. a bit. But it's yeah. Wi-Fi. It's Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi. Is what it is. Marco. So we haven't seen you in a while, so we might as well make this like a double um, Q and A. Q&A. The fans have... can ask you a question as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm I think that, I think that's just um, sorting out his his, his Wi Fi. Um, let me ask you some things. Uh, what is it like to be in training? How's this guy in training? Ooh, Matt. Yeah. He's very yo. He's very intense in the sense of like when he puts his mind on something, he. He works like like me and Matt. We we have a competition like normally when you do sprints and stuff. Mm-hmm. Then I try and beat Matt with knowing in myself I'm not gonna do it. But in that we like motivate one another to, to give our best. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you but you also like um you're new to the squad obviously. So like I mean it's a it's a whole different. I think it's a diff- Matthew. It's a whole different ball game now at um at the Warriors. It's like a lot of some people have left experienced players, a lot of young players in the side. Um, yeah, it's it's completely changed. To be honest, like it's a whole different team dynamic. Um, but it's been quite cool. There's been no sort of issues. The new guys have fitted in quite well, so it's been quite nice. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So we we've got um, a question here from a He wants to know what your, who your favorite cricketers were growing up. Probably um, Session Tenduka. Um That's when I was really young. Session Colors. Um, but more recently, I'm not sure. Eh? Um, been out of the game for a while. I haven't been watching <laughs> too much. I think probably white ball stuff. Roy Chalmers is someone I'm I'm enjoying watching at the moment. Mm-hmm. Of yeah, course, yeah. So. How do you? Th- what do you think about? So we were chatting yesterday, both of to both of you, baby, um, and you guys will analyze the game a lot better than we as fans will, I think. Um, but with regards to the Mumbai Indians, obviously they have Kwani and Rohit with- on top of the order, man. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people were talking about Quentin the Cock and the way who compliments him when he ba- when he bats. You know what I mean? So, like for example, um, when Kwani bats with someone like Temba, he com- kind of comes out of his shell. Like for so many years when he played with Amla. Well, Amla was yes, he scored quickly in the power in the in the power plays, but he wasn't a risk taker, and he kind of had that guy on the other side just to like Amla keeps him calm. So like we saw something similar with Timber. So we know that Quinton bats very well with a guy that is more calm at the other end. Yet we did see him be, um, put on some some shows with Gianaman Malanet at the obviously at the MSL, but. Um, do you think that Rawid and him would make a good partnership um, at, at Mumbai Indians? Or do you see an opportunity maybe for Rawid to move to the middle of the overs? Some of the fans said yesterday. And then who would open with him? Who would you open with him? Well, we have to look at the rest of the squad, you know. I haven't seen the entire squad from top to bottom. So I need to actually go look at the full team. Yeah. Um, let, me just go, let me just pull it up. I think... I think... Roy, yes, I love watching him at the top of the order. He's just yeah. so. I mean, he's so nice to watch. And I think didn't they do quite well last year together? Yeah, they did. They did quite. A, they did all right. I mean, I mean, Quenny was the main, the main instigator between the two. I think um, for majority of the times, it's like one of them, one of them. They'll they'll get off to a quick start, and then um, sometimes one, uh, they'll lose their wicket cheaply. Um, but there's also Chris learning that side, you know, but then... That's, that's you know, the other guy. Yeah. So you kind of have to kind of like switch between the two, you know, like, you know um, because of the overseas players, you want to get all your overseas yeah, yeah. players in the side. Yeah. yeah. I don't cool. know. It's a tough one. I think Quinton always has to play every game. Mm. Um, it's just about whether... You know, I, I would stick with them, Royet and, and, and Quinny, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Marco, are you just going to be quiet? Because it's your opportunity to ask Matt all the questions you've always been waiting to ask him. <laughs> yeah, um, I've, I've, actually, I've actually been chatting to Matt a lot during practice. But yeah, just trying to pick his brain and to figure out how he how he gets it 
right to be mentally strong because every time we do fitness and stuff like that, I just then I see Matt going and I just think to myself, this oak is crazy, but he just keeps on going. So one of the questions is actually like, how do you do it? It's just, I know we did chat a bit, but not in depth. Yeah. I'd, um, well, I think first of all, it is, I mean, I've put a lot of hard work into my fitness. Um, and then secondly, I just, I, I literally like, I hate losing. So I, I really just don't want to lose to anyone. Um, and it's, it's always a nice feeling just like giving it your all in fitness and being absolutely dead. Like I, I hate not giving it everything and then feeling still fine after practice. Like I want to feel like I've given it my all, you know? So yeah, I think it's mainly to do because I just hate losing. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Here's a cool one from one of the fans. He says a player from the past you'd like to bet alongside. Um, I think maybe a session, eh? Session to talk about, I would like. Yeah. What about you, Marco? Not a bad story. Yeah. What, what about you? Um, I think I'd probably. Oh, sorry. I think I would like to. Oh. I think Ricky Ponting, just because Maddie would probably know why. Just to <laughs> his brain on the because yeah. I've been I've been working on my 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 pull shot recently. So then, yeah, just to pick his brain in that aspect. So yeah. that's Matthew, someone I would I also wouldn't mind Ricky Ponting to be honest. No, top quality player. Because yeah. I was analyzing Marco in the Nets when he was here with Durban Heat. He was in Cape Town with Durban Heat, and I was analyzing him obviously because a lot of people were like they come to me and they ask me about the younger players. Um, because like, I don't know, I've got some, mm -hmm. for some reason, I like to see who's the next in line. And yeah. so obviously like, I'm always, I'm always looking for who's the next best thing and who's the next best thing. And I was watching Marco, it's the blow bloody hard, eh? He does. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he hits it hell of, he, he really does hit it hard. You shouldn't have told him that now though, because his head's going to yeah. explode. Yeah, so... No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> He said, maybe not you that's doing the pumping in the gym. Yeah. Yeah, I'm maybe. trying. I'm trying, but yeah. Oh, he's, he's put on 5 kgs, eh, Kali? Yo. No, so, not 5. 4. 4 kgs, wow. yeah. Well, still yeah. in muscle. Wow. So, um, anything new, I would say, Marco, from that you're learning at the Warriors compared to what you did at the Knights? Oh, new as in skill-wise or is it in any just, aspect? Just in, just in any aspect, something that's refreshing for you that you maybe didn't see before. Oh, um, I would say like what I learned a lot is like everyone, like I learned not, not something in, not something specific from anyone, but I just realized or saw how everyone wants to help one another and then like the team environment is for me is is great because everyone it feels like they really want to help one another and try and help each other improve in their game mm. whether it's batting bowling or just mentally for for mentally preparing for training or or fitness wise so in all aspects like all the players really try and help and push one another to be the best that they can be and yeah, that's the thing I enjoyed and picked up while while training for the past month and a half or two months. Yeah. Yeah. Are you keeping in touch with your brother? Yes, of course. My <laughs> brother went hunting this weekend, so he he sent me some some photos of a, a flag fark or what or what do you call it a bush fark or whatever in English. <laughs> You sent me a few pics, so then yeah, we we keeping 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 touch. Yeah, <laughs> you give him the right uh, definition for bushwhack. 
a bush pig, man. Bush pig. A bush pig. You know how to go on that. You also you have to help me as well in that aspect, eh? I yeah, you guys. A bush work. A bush work. I think, I think before, Yo. you do your, before you do your first ever press conference, I'm going to have to prep you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. But anyway, so, so Matty, um, uh, sorry, I'm just getting a message about people that want to come on. Okay, so with regards to... High performance, the importance of the high performance training center. Obviously, you guys both would have probably been around there and, and seen what it's like. Give us a description, like if you could describe it for us, because obviously I've never been there. I've never seen it. Um, like what sort of things are at this place? What do you work with? Um, particular machinery, whatever. Yeah, I think the literally it's it's got everything you need to be the best player you want to be. So for instance, the Merlin, um, the first year I went to the National Academy, I mean, I must have faced that thing till it was running out of gas. Um, <laughs> it was, yeah, it's such good value that that Merlin, it's the spin ball machine. Um, okay. And then, yeah, it's literally got everything, eh? um, from gym facilities to good wickets, um, good machinery, like you said. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I wish we had one year in PE because you can only get better as a player. That's that's one thing for sure. Yeah. I just want to see maybe if I can find. I just want to get this um, this catch from Rabada. I need to find it, man. She was anyway. I'm looking for it. Um, when I do find it, we're gonna put it on our website. Uh, Yo, yeah, so like I want to put it, I want to put it on the website and then like share it with everybody. I hope I can do that in time. Um, but at least let's focus on this one now for now. Um, okay. Mar Marco, anything? Ask ask Matt a couple of questions so you can entertain the fans while I look for this thing. <laughs> mm. so, oh, come on. Like we, I have one question, but it's not cricket related. Though. It's like like we've we've been hanging out quite a lot, and I just want to know whose company you enjoy m most between me and Dan. Oh, oh, Dan, you say? Yes. Uh, I enjoy your company more than Dan, you say. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> oh, no, I'm joking, bro. I enjoy oh. both of your guys' company. I'm just, I know, I'm raving on him. He's been sending me, I've just seen my WhatsApp <laughs> mooring here. I'm getting loads of WhatsApps here. Yeah. yeah. What are you guys yeah. doing? No, I'm, I'm, I'm here at Dan's house. So, We're having some lacquer supper, boys. So, yeah, I'm, oh. I'm eating some pasta his parents made for me. It's, yeah, it's spicy. And then... Is it, what? Chicken <laughs> pasta? No, it's literally just pasta. Uh, pasta. It's clean Italian, pasta. Yeah. Italian dish. It's an Italian dish, apparently. Uh, uh, should I... So, uh, are, 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 are we just taking over Khalid show here or what? <laughs> I think so. Uh, so we, we're going to have to entertain, I suppose. Yeah, the, we'll send uh, in yeah, the questions, Khalid. people. <laughs> yeah. Just entertain everybody till I come back. Um, Marco, you yes. can take over the questions. <laughs> Just have a convo. <laughs> I thought we overtaking your show here, Khalid. Yeah, yeah no. I just want to get... I have to put this um, this KG catch on. It's, it was amazing. It was serious. Yeah. yeah. So, Marco, if you guys had to both pick, like, uh, um, how can I say... If you could face one particular bowler in the nets, or maybe okay, well, let's say one particular bowler for the, the entire day, who would you want to face? Let's ask Matt first. I'd go for Shane Warne. Why? Because he, if I, if I can face him for a day, I surely will know how to play leg spin for the rest of my life. <laughs> Which makes sense. Makes sense, yeah. 
Um, that I'll was a brilliant you. answer. That was a brilliant <laughs> answer. I didn't expect that. I thought he's going to make pick someone easy to face so that he can smack him around the ground all day. No, no. <laughs> I, was, I was literally thinking of saying someone I can face the whole day just to have a. But yeah, now you put me a bit under pressure. Yet, so. Yeah, I think. I think I'll probably want to face Pat Cummins for all day to try and. Yes, so, so your head is going to get hit the whole day. He's going to bounce oh, wanted, the whole day. He's going to break his back. You know how tall I am, Matt. He's going to break <laughs> his back. Uh, you got, you got to pick a spinner when you want to face someone the whole day because he's just going to hurt you the whole day. You don't want to be sore the whole day. Yeah, but I want to improve, you know, boss. That's why we're here. Okay, sorry, yep. fella. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know. You obviously played some T Twenty cricket. So um, in that in that MSL, um, who was probably the, the hardest bowler that you faced? Who you struggled against? Me. Yeah. yeah in the ne- in in the nets. Even in the nets, or or out in the middle. Um. It w- I wouldn't say he was the hardest, but facing Wyab Rias was like quite cool. Um, just he's got some serious pace and he tails the ball from like over four, which I still don't understand. But yeah, mm. he was he was quite he was quite cool to face. Um, yeah. And then facing Met in the nets was also, and especially keeping to Met in the nets was like. Yeah, it's so cool to see how he goes about his business and how he just sets batsmen up. Um, so yeah, those two were quite cool. Yeah, and that's quite incredible. So we got a couple of questions in the comment section. More like a whole string of them coming in over here that we have obviously missing out. Um, top five players at the mom at the moment in world cricket, would you say? Uh, let's let's try to make it equal between the two of you. Um, I would say Coley, Cummings, uh, Steve Smith, Lavuskachny, and who else? Jofra, probably. Jofra Archer as well. Jofra, yeah. Possibly Jofra. Ben Stokes, sorry. Ben Stokes. Oh, yeah. Forgot it. No South Africans there. Yeah, yo, that's amazing. Yeah. It's sad. But Marco, and you? If you could add to that? It's probably the same, same, not exact same, but I would, yeah, I would add, like, I, I, I would think Jaffa for me, and then just, and Pat Cummins as well, bowling wise, and then it's basically the same. I can't think of, um, any else? Probably, probably the, when death hitting and finishing finishing off games is would probably be Glenn Maxwell for me definitely. But yeah. otherwise, I can't really add. I'm very biased. <laughs> I'm very what do you biased. Say? What do you like? Say? I mean, mine is Quinny. Oh, Quinny. Um, Quinny, yeah, yeah, yeah Quinny for say. me. Virat Kohli, I can't look away at Virat Kohli. Um, it depends what format as well. It's quite tricky. But yeah. if I'm gonna take if I'm gonna take um, ODI cricket, let's just do it World Cup vibe. Mm. Um, then I'll have to go Virat and Kwani. I really like um, Jasper Boomerah, his ability, especially in the in the in the in, in the end overs. Pat Cummins, phenomenal. Mitchell Stark, phenomenal. Um, Roy Sharma. Rohit Sharma. And uh, what about what about a spinner, man? Like um, Imran Tahir is still one of the best, but okay, he's retired now. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, uh-huh. as well, Chahal. It's, it's, it's incredible. Yara, probably as well. Yeah. So I'm going to leave you with this, this, this question. Um, favorite cricket ground? You guys can both answer that question. Um, I have to, I'm getting some ma- major feedback over here, so I'm just going to exit the stream and come back in. But um, you can just answer this question quickly. 
probably for me would be Newlands. Newlands. Yeah, that's that's not bad. Yeah, for me it's it's difficult because personally I like playing in Potchefstroom, but yeah, but scenery wise I would also I would also go with Newlands, and because I'm a bowler I get movement there as well. So mm. I would also. Pick, Newlands a bit above it. St. St. George's is also cool when it's the the crowd is, the is, is not buzzing there. back as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. The only thing the, the, the only reason why I don't pick pots because as a bowler it's not nice bowling there when the wicket's flat. Eh? Oh. Yes. When isn't it flat, bro? Exactly. Yeah, although when I played the four-day game there against the Lions, it was my first game there, professional game, and it was nipping all over the place. I was looking so forward to, to it and it disappointed me. Bro. Yeah, because everyone thinks Poch lies flat track and then... Yeah, nip, nip, nip. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, so all awesome. Good. So, who did you pick? I, did, I missed it now. So, so Matthew, you said? I said Newlands and St George's when it's when the crowd's going and the band's going, it's okay. it's nice to play there. Awesome. Okay, let's get into before we get into more questions. Oh, um, maybe I should give you one more before we have no. Actually, it's eight thirty now. Let me get on Aditya and let's have a chat with him. Marco, you can stay on. Yeah. I like you on the screen because you give him maybe a, you can stay here. Um, Aditya's going to give us an insight into the match. Um, so this is going to be awesome. Aditya, you can ask the boys any questions you want. I'm going to give you an opportunity to ask the boys any questions you want as well and give you insight on. But let's talk IPL now. So, guys, this is going to kind of be our IPL preview um, and our IPL review. So, he's going to talk about, obviously, some of the games that the game that happened today and then some of the games that are coming up, um, particularly with regards to the Proteus as well. So, Aditya, take it away. Hi, guys. Good to see you all. Uh, How's about? Very good, man. How are you? Uh, so today we probably saw one of the most exciting IPL games you can ever hope to watch. Uh, it went on, it went into the super over, and uh, batting, bowling, fielding, captaincy, everything was just top notch. Uh, so to begin with, we had the Delhi Daredevils uh, who batted first. And Mohammed Shami, the Indian international quick, uh, he just he just ran through the top order. Uh, so they were about, I think, 30 for four, something like that. And uh, then, of course, uh, Shreya Zayar and is a captain, and Rishabh Pant, they had a 70-over run partnership. But uh, it's, it still sort of fell through. I think what, like, like 80 for five at the end of it, uh, 80, 90 for five by the end of it. And then Marcus Stoin is towards the end. Uh, he just hit a lot downtown, and I think the last four over 61 runs were scored. So incredible! I think he made 53 of 21 balls. Fantastic, outstanding innings. Uh, and then post that, uh, we had a boys from South Africa, KG and Andre Portier, uh, open the bowling. Uh, and I think this time they were met with perhaps uh, a more disciplined top order batting performance from. Uh, Kings Eleven Punjab, but that was short lived because they went from being 30 for no loss to 35 for four within the span of two overs. Uh, so I guess there was um, there was a, a pretty significant collapse there. Uh, but then towards the end, Mayank Agarwal he almost took them home. But it was KG was the standout bowler uh, because he took. Two for 28 uh, in four overs, and there were two tough chances that were missed of his bowling also. Uh, and then he bowled the super over, and uh, he took two wickets there as well. So I think if there were, if there were two players who were really sort of standout players, one would be Marcus Stoyles who's batting, and then KG who showed no sign of rustiness. And, you know, it almost felt like uh, the KG of like IPL 2019, where he took 19 wickets, come back. And, uh, you know, replicate those performances all over again. And towards the end, I simply have to mention this, but the captaincy was brilliant. Uh, you know, in the last over, Mayan Gagarwal was batting on 89. Uh, he was, he had to make, they had to make one of one. They had to make, 
one of two, and then uh, he hit a he hit one ball, uh, you know, over point, you know, to the field uh, to the field in the deep. Uh, Shimon Hetmai who caught it, and Kevin Peterson on commentary <laughs> said that the fielder that a fielder there at deep point is typically there just for show, uh, you know, towards the end of a game, and the chances of a batsman hitting a ball there. You know, on the last ball of an innings, it's just incredible. It's, it very rarely happens. So this was brilliant captaincy. So he took the catch. The crossed over Chris Jordan uh, is on strike, and Marcus Stone is balls on the balls on the pads. He hits it promptly to short square leg, and we've got KG there who takes a very sharp catch. Incredible captaincy. The game's at a tie, and then towards the end, got a super over and uh, Delhi Delhi, uh, Delhi captains win it. So incredible. I think it's as exciting an IPL game as we ever get to watch. Yeah, it sounds sounds like a very interesting and inter- interesting game. I didn't I didn't actually watch the game, to be honest. I was I was quite busy busy at the at um, in PE. But um yeah, I'm very I'm very excited to actually to see the other games as well, how they unfold and how the how, how the teams are gonna do. Um, I'm not sure is is Matt Matt and him still on? Was it only me and you? Oh, I'm I'm still here. I don't know where Matt oh, yeah, went. No. We'll we'll get Matt back again. <laughs> 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 we are, I just wanted to see it for just a few seconds, just let Marco be a little bit a little bit awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he was under pressure there. Man. Yeah, he was under pressure. So that was um, beautiful. Aditya, I loved your review, but that's perfect. We can actually cut that out and put it on the channel separately as a review later. Um, what is your favorite part, Matt, from the parts that you saw? What is your favorite part of that match? Um, definitely my young's um knock, eh? Um, although the way he went out was I mean, he just had to knock it into the uh, into the outfield for one and he hit it straight to the fielder. Um <laughs> which was disappointing because he, he should have finished the game off there. But I think yeah. all around it was it was good cricket and it's always nice to see when it goes down to the last ball, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, Aditya, you could give these youngsters because obviously these are youngsters that you'd probably want to see in the future in the IPL. Definitely, you must say. You now you have to say definitely because they're right in front definitely. of you. <laughs> but <laughs> give, them, give them some insight into the, some of the guys... Um, that are kind of on a similar age to them, maybe, um, that are in the tournament? And um, how do the youngsters grow their talent in India? Um, obviously, the IPL does amazing things for them. Yes, yeah, so generally, uh, what what I hear from the legends who've played the IPL, you know, and particularly the most, the most um, relevant insights that I can think of off the top of my head, you know, one comes from Kevin Peterson, where he says that in his first year, he played in the same team as Rahul Javid, Anu Kumble, Jack Kalis, Mark Boucher, Dale Stain. Mm. You know, it doesn't it doesn't get a lot better than that. You know, where you have you have this group of players and you know all of them legends and all exchanging, you know, their own experiences and you come out a better player. Most recently, Ben Stokes gave an interview where uh, he said that Josh Butler went to the IPL. He played for the Mumbai Indians uh, for a season or two. And uh, he said that when Joss came back, I just thought he came back a better player. Because what happens there is that you're, you know, you're exposed to crowds that are consistently in the 40,000, 50,000 sort of range. And you're expected to perform under that sort of pressure, uh, which, is, which is very draining for uh, an international cricketer. But somehow you have to find a way of dealing with it. And so... Ben Stokes' performance in the World Cup last year and then in the Ashes where he made that brilliant 135 at Headingley, um, you know, uh, you know, he attributes that to a lot of the pressure that he's dealt with at the IPL. Like he was he was voted the most valuable player in 2017. And he also had a pretty remarkable like 2019 season, uh, the IPL. So uh, it's very beneficial and uh, you know, there's there's a lot to learn for players. So right now, uh, Josh Felipe, who is uh, uh, an up, up and coming cricketer in Australia, you know, he's 
he's joined up with uh, the Royal Challengers in Bangalore. And he gets to play with Aaron Finch, Virat Kohli, Abe de Villiers, Moin Ali, Dane, Dale Stave, Chris Porras. You know, it's it's almost like that's a finishing school for him because then when he when he becomes uh, when he plays for Australia, which is almost a certainty at this stage, you know he's he's going to be a much better player. Yeah. So Matt, um, I want to ask you um, some of the proteas you you would have faced some of the or most of the proteas um, already um, these fast bowlers like a guy like KG. Um, how many times have you actually faced him? Um, and when you did, even if it is in the nets, what makes him so difficult to play against, man? Like, what makes him so special, like so world class? Yeah, so I actually I faced him in the Mzanzi League. I faced mm. a couple of overs from him, um, and then when I was with the Pro Tiers, um, yeah. I was training with them, but I missed his net session, and I was begging him. You can even ask him. I was, <laughs> please, but I, I want you to come and bowl to me in the nets. So he was sitting out the third ODR, I think, in Bloemfontein. And I said, please, bud, just come bowl to me in the break. And it was getting to like 5.30, 6 o'clock, and it was getting dark. And he said, okay, come, I'll bowl like five overs to you. And he bowled to me, and it was yo, magical, like, just to face him. Um, he gives you no bad balls. And, yeah, it's just that presence that he has when he's bowling. It's... Yeah, it's it's awesome to face. There's no, I mean, he's the best in the world. So, um, and the skills he has, just to nip it away, nip it back in, on the same line, same length, um, and not, not much changes in his wrist or his action, which is yeah. his world class. Yeah. So I did. Yeah, you can see what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to give the fans a little bit of an extra insight into the players that are playing in the IPL. And you would, you, right. you guys will also know, obviously, about someone like Anik Nokia. You played. He's one of your teammates at the Warriors. So. Andrich, I mean, he's an amazing person. We know what type of lad he is. He's uh, very, always cheerful, always smiling. Um, but, geez, he steams in, eh? Um, <laughs> like, what's special about him, Matt, would you say? I think uh, definitely his journey that he's been through. Um, mm. to, I think probably about two, three years ago, he couldn't make the Warriors side. Um, and now he's a, a world beater. So, and I think... He came out of school with a lot of injuries and then he was in and out of the EP side. And then I think that uh, Mzanzi League just shot him through the roof where that, that first MSO. So yeah. I, th I think he's got that mentality now where he, he plays every game like it's his last because he's just, I think, really so thankful to be to be playing and not be injured, you know. Um, so And he works so hard. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean... Comparing him to like someone like KG, like with regards to speed. Now, just to, for us fans, we can just look at the clock, and kind of we can we can gauge some some fast bowlers. And I know I know Marco, if you also notice this, but like some fast bowlers look a lot faster when you're watching it from the side than actually when you're in the middle they're facing them. Um, we know that Andrich is quick. Uh, is he the fastest you faced? Mm, no, I don't think so. But, I mean, I think he's he's probably quicker than uh, Sasanda Magala, I mm -hmm. would say. I'm not sure yeah. about the speed. But Magala feels quicker than him. Yeah, that's what I wanted you to know, ask you. Yeah. So, th yeah, so that's the thing. Like, Magala will feel quicker in the nets because he bowls a bit of a heavier ball. But Anrich is quicker, you know. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, he he's, yeah, he's gas. He's, he's at you, like... He's he's he wants to hurt you. That's what mentality he has. So that's mm. one thing that's not nice when facing him. You know he cool. wants to hurt you. Yeah. So Aditya, I'm gonna give you two questions. One you can ask Marco and one you can ask um Marco. <laughs> I keep <laughs> because I'm thinking of your brother the whole time. <laughs> so I was like, well, you can ask Marco. Um and then then we can um we can say bye to both of you because I want to just give Matt some questions from the fans before he leaves because I know that he doesn't have all the time in the world to chat to me all day. So, DJ, take it away just with one more question each. Sure. Uh, my first question to you would be, um, what's your preparation like when you're facing steaming quick bowlers, you know, like Andre or KG? You know, is, do you have a certain routine that you follow? Uh, is there work that you've done on your back lay, you know, for work, things like that? 
Um, yeah, so not really um, sort of preparation. I, obviously, I face Anrich and, and Miguel in the nets like all the time. Um, but for me, it's just about getting mentally ready for that um, and being and telling myself to be nice and aggressive because when I'm aggressive, then my movements are a bit sharper. Um, and then I like to stay just a little lower in my base. Uh, I try to stay a bit lower. Um, I just feel that I like I pick up the length a bit better when when facing quick bowlers. Um, so yeah, I think it's just a mindset shift for me to be a, a bit more aggressive. So my intensity is 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 higher. Okay. Mm. Anything for Marco? Yes, of course. Um, my question would be: like over time, have you have you experienced a change in the behavior of pitches in in South Africa? Because typically. You know, we don't, you know, in, in the last two series, perhaps, you know, Centurion has been rather uncharacteristic. You know, it's been low, slow and spinning, uh, which typically isn't the case, right? Yes, yeah. Um, I haven't played a lot on Centurion, but I know so, uh, having team chats and, and those type of stuff, Centurion is, is quite quite spicy or in the sense of it's, it's a quick quick um quick pitch but where i'm from from potchestrom like they like we always used to say potchestrom is very flat to bowl on and stuff like that where in my matric year or two years back when i you know when i started playing a bit um, for the dragons and stuff like that um we actually discussed where it's not actually that flat anymore where if you give where you put enough effort into your balls then you would always get something out of the pitch so yeah mm -hmm. so then I, I haven't really played a lot on other pitches but those two i've i've recognized there's a bit of a slight change in the conditions okay cool so thanks marco for coming on aditya thank you to you too we'll chat to you again when thank there's you. more proteas playing in the ipl i don't want to i'm not going to do every single game so only when the proteas are on display um we're kind of doing a proteas watch i'll chat to you again when that happens so thanks a lot for awesome. guys for, for tuning in thank you see you man see you man cool matt now let's just run through a couple of questions for you uh, the, i hope you're enjoying it so far um, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So let's start. There's a whole list of from from Ravi. So I'm just gonna to, I'm gonna take two more, um, and let's see what's the best one. Let's ask you some of the field questions. Yeah, if you could pick okay. a superhero, if it's none of these, then okay. If in the Incredible Hulk got to fight Superman, um, who would win? Would you say? I don't know how much you're into superhero stuff. I'm not into it, but I think. I I would actually go for Superman. Okay, cool. Speed. It's an interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's an interesting one because people say, and now you're gonna see my nerdy side. So people yeah. obviously say because the Hulk gets stronger and stronger as you make him more angrier. So the more he gets hurt, the stronger he gets. Whereas Superman can't be beaten unless you have Kryptonite. So it's like basically putting the two oh, strongest yeah. superheroes against each other, and letting them fight each other. It's like it's it's insane with. Unlimited I, I, I actually didn't even know that. Yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> so yeah, I've learned something new. Uh, let's say which bowler now that that's the one that's been asked already. Which spinner you already answered that one? Um, are you into rugby? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, which super rugby team do you boys support, or do you support? I support the Lions. Um, I haven't been watching as much rugby as I would like. I think I've gone off it probably in the last year and a bit. Um, but like I said, with, with most sports, I just want to see good sport. You know, I, I don't mm. – I'm not really like – Awful. I know, like you, you in Manchester, I think, or Liverpool. <laughs> Manchester, Manchester. Yeah. Manchester like, careful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you like all in, and and you'll do everything. But like for me, I just want to see good sport and and entertainment. So yeah, yeah. Let's take one more from him before we end off with the last question, and that is, ooh, what is your idea of the perfect date? Dead of a two at Clifton Beach or paid bowling with the missus? Um, obviously, yeah. maybe not Clifton Beach for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I'm probably going to have to go with 
dinner for two because I, I know my girlfriend won't really <laughs> dig to play paintball with me, even though I would like that. But I, she, she, I think she'll prefer a little supper on Clifton. Yeah. Is the, has she ever taken you on a date? That's the question. No, she has, yeah. Yeah. So, and, yeah, and... She's, she's taken me out on a couple of dates, yeah. to be honest. Um, we've been dating for a while, so. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. And I don't want to put you on the spot. Let me not ask you which was your favorite one. Um, yeah, let... yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, is it, what is in your travel bag? Uh, a PS4, Xbox One, MacBook, or anything else that you have? Neither. Um, I don't mm. play PS4 or Xbox. I don't play any games. Um, mm. So probably a MacBook because if I'm studying or watching series, that will be mm -hmm. my go-to. But I, I even I hardly watch series. Like I'm yeah. very much. I don't do a lot of gaming and stuff. So yeah. That's why you're such a great cricketer. Uh, so no, uh, no, last no. last question. Any advice for a girl cricketer? Uh, that's a tough one because it doesn't mean if you're a girl you can't play cricket um, there's there's some really amazing cricketers that are that are girls at the moment um, I would just say believe in yourself and just enjoy it have fun yeah so that's amazing um, we have so many episodes that we've done on the show um, for you to go check out as well on from Denisha who is the under 19 women's um, cricket coach and as well as from Faye Tarnaclough who is obviously a, a pro tier and a, and a Western Promise cricket that give some amazing advice. Gabby also um, and Claire from obviously Western Province women. They speak a lot on the channel as well. So you guys must check out that content. Go look in our playlists, etc. Um, you'll find Gabby and obviously Denisha's interviews in our On Lockdown series um, playlist. And you'll find some of the an awesome conversation about women's cricket in South Africa in our podcast playlist, which is obviously the playlist that this will be in. So, guys, thanks a lot for calling in. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Thanks a lot to Matt, and I'm hoping he's going to do this again for us in the future. Um, but thanks a lot for tuning into the show. We really had a lot of fun. Um, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Matt, you want to tell the people to do that? Like, comment, share, subscribe? Yep. Like, comment, <laughs> share, and subscribe. <laughs> no, Khalid, thanks for having me on. It's always, it's always like a, a chatting. And, yeah, people, you must... Like, comment, share, and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> and let's to leave one because I know give uh, uh, you wanted to ask a question quickly. Let me just ask you. Let's take it back to Bert, Matt. What was your favorite moment from your Cubs week innings with Jugs? What's your favorite moment from? Um, there were a couple, to be honest. There were we we played a lot of good innings as they um. So I enjoyed all of them. Yeah. Mm. Okay, cool. And this is the last one. When are you going to start living up to your potential? He already is. Thank you very much. So, guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. We'll tune, We'll um, obviously chat to you guys very, very soon. Um, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, as Matt has said. Also, please don't forget to download the latest issue of the magazine. Um, we have three issues available. You can get them all right now. The link is on the screen. And the link is in the description. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Just for the...